Greetings and welcome to an in-depth with a difference. As you can see from the sign, the Shaw Foundation is hard at work again. We are here in Gasparillo. I'm DK Roster. So happy to be joined with a conversation by Professor Roger Hussein. And Prof, give me an idea, we're at Gasparillo here. What is the motive of today's exercise? Well, today we are giving out 50,000 seedlings in Gasparillo. We are being supported by the Scotiabank Group today. And the objective is to help to build up national food security by encouraging people to plant. As you all know, people, the Food Import Bill of Charity Bay was $6 billion. That's a lot of money. And given the state of the economy in the context of the fact that we are in an economic, economic depression, and economic activity since 2015 has declined by about 20%. We at the Shaw Foundation thought it best in the interest of the nation to go about sharing out seedlings to help people promote their national food security, to plant some more, to take some carbon dioxide out of the air, and ultimately, in the little ways that we can, reduce the food import bill. We have been going excellently. We are at 2.2 million seedlings started since April 2020, we have been doing it every single week. The people have been responding excellently. We have been sharing pictures here, there, everywhere on our social media sites. And we think we have been able to make a dent. An aspect of this seedling effort specifically focuses on the children's homes, the orphanages, the, the, the adult care centers. And we get some very deep pictures. We get some pictures that show transformation. You see a lettuce tree from the beginning grow up grow, grow, grow until the point that they harvest it. And sometimes you see one institution pick 75 lettuce, another one 100, another one 200 and so on. And we but, have been but, getting really good results. But in terms of those results and those numbers though, it's, I believe you started off with a figure that you wanted to, that you wanted to distribute and it seems as though you may have surpassed that. What was the theory, what was the rationale behind saying, okay, well, this is the amount that we want to deal with? Right. So we started off with 1 million seedlings. The rationale is that, well, $1 million seemed like a fairly high target, a target that if we met, we would make a dent on the national uh, food security situation. We would help to improve it. A dent on reaching our wide cadre of, 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 of relevant people. So we went at $1 million at first. But then, as we went into the field and we realized the vast amount of people requesting seedlings, we decided as a group to change it to $3 million. So that's how we are currently at 2.2 million. We are estimating by September, October, we would reach the 3 million target of next year. And in parallel, we have also started our 1 million fruit tree drive. That's very early in, in the early stages. We have only reached about 300 fruit trees. But rather than go on a 1 million tree drive, we inserted a 1 million fruit tree drive so that we could bring some more food on the table, take some carbon dioxide out of the air, um, you know, bolster the ecosystem but at the same point in time bring some more food to the table. This could in turn potentially reduce food imports again because you could do some substituting along. So we are going at it very hard in a very scientific clear cut way. Um, good solid people involved using data and we have been making good strides. I like the fact that you talk about using data but how how does it feel and how does it how does it impact you specifically personally there's one thing where you have economists say okay well they're talking about measures that should be able to work and they cite places they cite other areas that it has been done you're literally on the ground running behind people showing them the sign telling them come and get this seat. how does that impact the work that you do differently tremendously uh, people have confidence in the work of the Shaw Foundation. We get that feedback. So once people see Shaw Foundation, once people see the various economists involved, and there are some good economists involved, they tend to, to, to congregate. And so we don't really have a difficulty at all to share the seedlings. We don't have a difficulty at all in getting feedback from people that receive the seedlings. And when the plants go to give us feedback of the growing plants, we don't have a, a difficulty in getting support. People welcome this initiative and the fact that it pulls some carbon dioxide out of the air is a tremendous added complementary benefit. So it has been going really well. It's a lot of sacrifice. It's weekend after weekend we are in different places. But you know what? We also appreciate the media. The fact that you could come down here and, and take time out to, to highlight what we do 
means that we feel we are making some dents and we appreciate the media has a tremendous role to play i always say in various places in the transformation of this economy you all have a job to go out there and say well these are the people that are doing the work let's work with them these are the things that we can do so we also say thank you to you all as well in this transformation process and how does your work on the ground affect the work that you do in the classroom one feeds into the other i i you cannot really be a real economist in my humble opinion if you don't understand poverty and when you go out here uh, you see real poverty you see people living in really really terrible conditions you it helps you to understand in a pictorial way in a in a live way what's the meaning of seven years of contraction it helps you to understand in a live way different from a textbook what is the meaning of 20 percent decrease in gdp we i mean we, we, we don't emphasize we have given out about five thousand hampers in the last two and a half years that's not something we emphasize but it the five thousand hampers are a signal and we do this on request from councillors and the churches and different different type of leadership in the community we do it on on request and there has been a lot of requests on it and what it allows us to see is real poverty is people who when you talk about the poverty line and living on, on, on less than 500 dollars a month tt you get to see that in existence and how it manifests on children how it manifests on the household and it helps us certainly me as an economist help help me to, to provide clarity as to the type of interventions needed and, and and the various technical things that we should do to try to specifically target those type of households and in terms of the, providing that clarity it seems as though one feeds into the other and then the other feeds back because i saw you here actually doing some work uh, as opposed to just say okay we're well, giving out seedlings you were also giving them some terms looking at the difference between contraction or uh, well, depression and recession so we're actually going to go to you doing that and then we take a short break after that some of you all would know is six billion dollars tt now six billion tt is something we can generally afford in Trinidad. No, but the problem is at this point in time we are in the middle of a depression a depression is something sharper than a recession a recession is two or more consecutive quarters of contraction a depression is two or more consecutive years of contraction and we are in our seventh year of contraction so we have lost 20 percent of gdp so if you had one dollar in 2015 you now have 80 cents in terms of what money can buy so we are what we are doing won't change change the substantive structure of anything but it is in, in the right direction we are trying to get people to make steps in the right direction to change their consumption habits so this year is a partnership the partnership has three people the main entity in this partnership is you the people you the people are getting the seedlings not as charity but as a, a gift to go home and plan to help change the productive structure we, the, we are the NGO Shaw Foundation that is, uh, supported this exercise and this is generously sponsored by Scotia Bank Scotia has been behind the Shaw Foundation and has helped it to grow considerably in the last year or two and we appreciate the support so what we ask of you all we ask you all to take the seedlings go home plant it tell your neighbor your friend and your family and when it is finished you go to the market, you buy some red bean seed, you buy some corn seed, and we continue the process. So this is what is called localized economic development. We change from the bottom up, because the trickle from the top to the bottom isn't working as fast as we could. So we thank you all for participating. We appreciate the support. And let's change the structure of production in Toronto Tobago. Thank you. Yeah. Good day everyone, my name is Dr. Rebecca Gokul and I am currently the president of the Shaw Foundation. Thank you very much for joining us today at the Foundation's Christmas Pop-Up Market. 
We are trying to encourage what is called localized economic development and really what that is is building indigenous entrepreneurship. We all know that in this host community we've been hit by the closure of Petrotrin, the closure of the refinery, the double whammy of COVID and what has been happening with some of our micro businesses. But in the midst of that we have seen many many positive strides towards development when people are running their households with single parents, with migrant households which is what we see a lot of in this area. The Shaw Foundation and, for, uh, and as a matter of fact this installment of the pop up market is the second in two years and we intend to increase the frequency of it over the next couple of years. For this iteration we have about 20, 15 to 20 vendors from the community that will be benefiting from exposure in terms of market, in terms of being able to generate, in terms of being able to generate a little income for themselves and their families for Christmas. For this year also we have an addition which is something that's very close to our heart, our Shaw Babies. What we would have done at the foundation is take young children who are under the age of 10 and started to build with them very valuable life skills. We started with giving them their own grow boxes to be able to teach them agriculture and this opportunity they were allowed to use some of their produce to create value added items that we gave them the opportunity to sell. So for example, we have an entire class at the from the Makale Government Primary School who is here who would have grown some vegetables on the compound of the school that they've turned over into chows, into pilori, into a few other items that they are selling today. We have a young little preschooler who would have grown her own lemons and made cakes and her own vinaigrette we have that um we're giving her the opportunity as well today and we have a little merchandiser madison's merchandise and she would have put together a few little small packages for kids we think that giving them these little opportunities can build really important micro entrepreneurial skills for these kids that, and, and and life lessons that they can take with them so if I had to choose one of these little talent, which one would you tell me to choose from? This one? Yeah? Why would you tell me to choose this one? Just because it's greener than all the other ones. Okay, that actually works better. How much is this one? This one is $20. Okay, I'd like to have this one.
just spoke with some young entrepreneurs at this event today. And how do you feel seeing the work that they're doing, looking at the fact that people are trying to build their careers, create new revenue streams in, a, in the context of what it is we're seeing economically, locally and globally, Prof? I feel elated. It, it's a tremendous sense of joy, especially given the age, the ages of some of the young people we see here. Small startups, but I, I know and, and most of us would know that starting from this low level, this small, this, this petty level, that how much you can grow. And that's what you need. You need localized economic development as part of the developmental strategy of Trinidad and Tobago. With localized economic development, you bring underutilized and unemployed resources into use. So it's a tremendous sense of satisfaction. I feel happy and hopeful for my people in Trinidad and Tobago. And we hope that this, these little steps continue and grow and grow exponentially until giant firms emerge from this, these type of exercises. And looking at that, looking at that growing effect from the bottom up. It seems sometimes that though there's uh, more of an emphasis on having things start at the top and trickle down versus start at a grassroots level and uh, blossom where they will. What, what is the difference between that looking at it from an economic standpoint? There is a major difference in the sense that when you depend on the trickle down, if there is a, a, a constriction in the trickle down process, then it doesn't reach the bottom of the, of the table. And we saw that, we saw that during the massive economic boom we experienced in the period 2000 to 2015. At the end of the boom, we had a rise in, in inequality and a rise in poverty, in my understanding of the facts. Localized economic development takes that strategy and turns it on its head. What it does, it starts directly at the bottom, so it increases the probability of reducing inequality and bringing people above the poverty line. And I love that type of strategy. It is working in various ways. It needs a momentum bigger than we have here, but it is going in the right direction and we need to work together to build it. Thank you. And there you have it. We want to thank you so much, Prof. We want to thank you, Shaw Foundation, all the entrepreneurs that we spoke with. And on behalf of the entire TTT team, we want to thank you for tuning in. This has been In Depth With Me. Thank you for joining us. Give it to